Today, let us see the law of conservation of energy and then how to verify the law of conservation of energy in a freely from falling body and also in object projected vertically upwards. Okay. Uh, what what is the law of conservation of energy? The total energy of the system remains constant as long as no external force does the work on the system. Or the total energy of the system, isolated system is conserved. Now let us see what is the system and surroundings. First, we have to define the system and surroundings. The system is one which we are, whatever the objects, object or objects we are considering, that is called the system. Okay. It may be one object or it may be many objects. But that is what all we are considering that as the system. And the rest of the things, except the objects under consideration, the rest of the things are called surroundings or environment. Okay. Now I will give a few examples for the isolated system. Here, what is happening? An object is under the free fall. When the object is under the free fall, the only force acting on the system is the gravity. Okay, now if I take the object and the earth as the system, then it becomes the isolated system and then the total uh, energy of the system remains constant. Okay, the interaction between the, or the work done by the internal forces, only we are considering there is no external force doing the work on the system. That is why the total energy of the system remains constant. Okay. So this is called what is called an isolated system. This, these are all the examples for isolated systems or systems under consideration. We have to define what is the system, what, what are the surroundings. For that, I'm giving the examples, examples for the isolated system. Now, next comes the object on a ramp. Here, I am considering the object and earth as the system and ramp as the surroundings. Now, you may be wondering, if object and earth are considered as the systems and then the ramp as the external object, then what about the work done by the ramp? Here the work done by the ramp is equal to zero because the force acting on the ramp is perpendicular to the direction of the um, so, uh, is in perpendicular direction. Therefore, the work done by the uh, perpendicular force or normal force is equal to zero. That is why uh, there is no uh, external force doing the work on the system. Again, it becomes the uh, isolated system. Understood? Object is on a ramp means uh, ramp and I am considering only the object and at the, the system ramp as the surroundings. Okay, suppose if I take the uh, ramp as the surrounding, the surroundings are doing, you, you, the ramp is doing the work on the object. Okay, so what about that work? Here, that is zero because the force acting on the object by the, the force applied by the ramp on the object is at 90 degrees. Therefore, the work done, you know the meaning of the work, W is equal to F dot D R F D cos theta. Okay, and then here, Theta is equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, cos 90 is equal to 0. Therefore, work done is equal to 0. Okay, that is how I am um, considering the system and surroundings. Okay, just to find the work done by the ramp. Now, next comes the spring mass system. Here, the mass and spring I am considering as the system. Therefore, the work done by the uh, mass on the spring is uh, considered as the internal work. In, um, the force applied by the object on the spring is the internal force and then the work done by the internal forces uh, comes uh, uh, conserved, okay? No external force is doing the work on the system. And the next comes the object sliding along a surface with friction. So here what I am doing is I am taking the surface and earth as the system. Therefore, even though the kinetic energy is, kinetic friction is doing the work, that comes under the internal force. The kinetic friction comes under the internal force and then the energy of the system is conserved or it remains constant. Now I have to verify the law of conservation of energy in two situations. One is freely falling object and another one is object projected vertically upwards. Now let us see the first case where the object is freely falling. Here again, I am saying that the entire setup is the isolated system. 
the object is falling freely under the gravity and then I am considering this as the both earth and the object as the system. Therefore, no external force is acting the, uh, no external force is doing the work on the system. Okay, now consider the point, there are three points. One is the highest point from where the object starts falling and then the another one is the lowest point just before touching the ground. Okay, and I will take any one intermediate point and I will check how the energy transformations are taking place, whether the energy of the system remains constant or changing. Okay, now let's see. At the point A, what is the energy? At the point A, the object has only um, potential energy. Am I right? Because the object is initially at rest and it is just falling. It is about to fall or it is just to falling, okay. So at that point, the initial velocity is equal to zero. Therefore, it has only the potential energy. The potential energy, you know, the gravitational potential energy is represented by mgh. Here, I am taking g as positive, downward direction as positive, okay. And later, I will take upward direction as the negative. Here, the downward direction of g as positive, g is nothing but your acceleration due to gravity. Now, next point is b. It is going down now, so b. At B, when the object comes to point B, it has both kinetic energy and potential energy because it has fallen some height, but again, it is above the reference point ground. Okay, so it has potential energy and then it gained some velocity, therefore it has the kinetic energy. Now we have to justify that this, the energy at B must be equal to the initial energy. Now, let us see what is the energy. The total energy of the system is both kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. You know the kinetic energy is equal to half mv square, but here I am taking v1. v1 is nothing but the instantaneous velocity. Okay, at this instant, what is the velocity of the object? That is v1. And then um, potential energy, gravitational potential energy, ug is equal to mgh dash. H dash is nothing but the total height is H and then it co already covered Y. Therefore, H dash is equal to H minus Y. So, this is the total energy of the object at B. Now, what I do is I will change the potential energy or I will try to write the potential energy in terms of kinetic energy or I will write the kinetic energy in terms of potential energy. In whichever way you are comfortable, you can take that one. But as of now, I will do because initially the object has the potential energy. So what I do is I will convert the kinetic energy terms or I will write the kinetic energy in terms of potential energy and I will check whether both the energy, both are one and same. Okay. Now, you know V of square is equal to kinematic equation. V of square is equal to V A square plus 2 A D. Here V A is equal to 0 because initially the object is at rest. So V A is equal to 0 and A is equal to G. I told already told you I am taking the downward direction as positive. Therefore, A is equal to plus G. And then the distance covered by the object is Y. And then V of is equal to I am taking V1. V1 is nothing but instantaneous velocity. Therefore, V1 square is equal to 0 plus 2G Y. Okay. Substituting the values in the kinematic equation. Okay. Next, energy E is equal to K plus UG. And I will substitute the values of K and UG here. So, K is equal to half M V1 square. And then UG is equal to MG H dash. And H dash is equal to H, H minus Y. After substituting the values, I get E is equal to MG H. Okay. And then next comes the point C. So, therefore, here again, the value of energy or the energy at B is same as the energy at A. Now, I will check the energy at C. What is energy at C? Energy at C is again kinetic energy plus potential and gravitational potential energy. But here, the object is almost touching the ground. Therefore, the UG is equal to 0. UG means the gravitational potential energy is equal to 0 because H is equal to 0. Now, we have to consider the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to half m v f square. That means I am taking the final velocity. You know, again, the uh, kinematic equation, v f square is equal to v a square plus 2 g h. And then again, v a is equal to 0. The object is falling from rest. v a is equal to 0. Therefore, v f square is equal to 2 g h. Okay. And here, 
k is equal to i will uh, input the vf in the f value vf value so for k is equal to half m v square instead of v uh, v square i will write 2 gh i will get k is equal to mgh so therefore e total is equal to mgh therefore energy at c is also again mgh now you have seen that the total energy of the system is constant whether it is a at a or at b or at c the values are same so we have mathematically proved that the total energy of the system is constant okay now we will go for the another example wherein the object is projectally uh, object is projected vertically upwards because these are the cases you are studying from uh, kinematics okay so let us see how the energy changes takes place in these two cases here is the object here the object is projected from a with a initial velocity vi and then it goes through b and reaches the maximum height at c so at maximum height the uh, velocity becomes a zero now i will start calculating the energy from a point a okay at point a again the total energy of the system is mechanical energy we are considering you know the, the total mechanical energy of the system e is equal to k plus ug that means kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy but uh, the object is at the reference point or at the base therefore height h is equal to zero therefore gravitational potential energy is equal to zero and then the kinetic it has only the kinetic energy kinetic energy is equal to we know half m v square and then here v is the vi because i am projecting the object with an initial velocity vi therefore the initial energy total energy of the system at a is half m v i square okay now let us consider the point b at point b the object has both the kinetic energy and potential energy you know the kinetic energy is equal to half m v square and here i am taking v1 v1 is the instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity means the velocity obtained by the or uh, velocity of the object at that particular instant okay therefore v1 is the instantaneous velocity and then gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh here the object covered a height of y therefore gravitational potential energy ug is equal to mgy now what i am trying to do is i will try to write the gravitational potential energy in terms of kinetic energy so for that i will take the help of the kinematic equation v of square is equal to va square plus 2 ad and then here a is the acceleration acceleration is equal to acceleration due to gravity because the object is going up i am taking this as negative g because the earth is pulling the object downwards that is i am taking positive and then here the object is going against the gravity that is why i am taking a is equal to minus g okay and then the height covered by the object or distance covered by the object is y in the y direction the distance covered by the object is y and then vf is equal to v1 v1 is nothing but your instantaneous velocity that means the velocity of the object at that particular instant therefore v1 square is equal to va square plus 2 minus g times y or v1 square is equal to va square minus 2 gy or e is equal to total energy of the system is both the kinetic energy plus potential energy and then i will substitute the values here ug is equal to mgy and then e is equal to half m v1 square and v1 square is equal to va square minus 2gy and then i will simplify the equation on simplifying i will get energy at v is equal to half m v i square understood okay next third point what is the third point at the maximum height at, at the point c at point c the energy again is total uh, energy of the system is total energy of the object at e is kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy but here the kinetic energy is equal to zero because when the object reaches the maximum height its velocity becomes zero so velocity at the highest point is equal to zero therefore vf is equal to zero therefore k is equal to zero k is equal to half mv square therefore that is equal to zero now we are left with only mg uh, gravitational potential energy so gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh and now i try to write the gravitational potential energy in terms of kinetic energy so vf square is equal to 
by taking the kinematic equation help of the kinematic equation you know vf square is equal to va square plus 2 ad and then again i will substitute the values vf is equal to 0 here because at the highest point the velocity is equal to 0 and then va square and then a is equal to minus g d is equal to h therefore v i square uh, and simplification i will get h is equal to v i square by 2g now the total energy of the system is uh, yeah, kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy and then the kinetic energy is equal to zero and then we are, i am left with only potential energy and then i am writing the potential energy in terms of velocity and uh, velocity so i will get e is equal to half mv i square so the velo the energy at c is half mv i square now you, if you see the uh, values at a and then at b see this one at a half mv i square at b half mv i square and at c half mv i square so the total the energy of the system remains constant or conserved here also the same thing if you see this one energy at a is mgh and energy at b is equal to mgh and energy at e c is equal to mgh in both the cases the energy of the system remains constant so for an isolated system the total energy of the system remains constant as long or i can say that for an isolated system as long as no external force does the work the energy of the system remains constant. Hope this helps. Thank you. Bye-bye.